Welcome to Composer's Play. My name is Scott Tobin. For the last 10 years, I've been composing music for video games, such as Project Reality, Squad, and Postscriptum. For a year now, I've been chatting to some of the best composers in the industry, and now you can hear their thoughts as we play through, discuss, and get a little nostalgic of some of the most memorable video game soundtracks. Hey everyone, and welcome. Uh, so today is a first for Composers Play, as we're going to be stepping into the 21st century of video game music. And I'm going to be playing uh, Mass Effect, and I'm really excited today, and I'm going to have the lead composer of Mass Effect, an industry veteran, Jack Wall. Jack, thank you so much for joining me. Hey, pleasure, Scott. Thanks for having me. Looking awesome, man. I haven't played this game in uh, about 10 years, so... Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's been a while. Oh, wow. Oh man, I just want to begin with the um, uh, the 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 Mass Effect, the, the menu music, uh, Vigil, and uh, talk a little bit about that. Yeah, that was a really super happy accident. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it it was never I didn't write this for the uh, for the menu screen. It was just um, it was actually when you go into the uh, I, uh, the archives, I think. Um, right. The Protheans, you know. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and, and all the kind of like um, catacombs there and with all the sort of buried right of these people and, and I wrote this kind of reverent piece for that and um, it, when they uh, and, and when the game shipped uh, I didn't know what was going to be in the menu um, oh okay on and it was like I heard Vigil playing I was like oh my god this is perfect <laughs> right yeah, <laughs> you yeah. Know, I was really I was really pleased because Casey Hudson, who's the director, he, uh, I think it was, he just made the decision last, right before it shipped, to throw this piece of music in the front, and uh, and it's a, it's a fan favorite, and I really appreciated that. So yeah, it's cool. Yeah, it, it is. Happy accents, and they usually the happy accents are always usually the the best things. Yeah, I mean, obviously not an accent, but I, I certainly didn't write it for the menu, but it works so perfectly that you know. It's, uh, I just thought it was it was a great idea after when I when I started to play the the shipped game, you know. Right. Because right. we had played the game, I can't even remember, tell you what was in here before it shipped, but you know it was something <laughs> else. Yeah, I probably wrote for the menu, which you know, in retrospect, uh, Casey did a did a solid by uh, you know putting, putting this one. In there. Right. Yeah, it just it just set the set the vibe for the whole game. Right, and and, and it's cool because you know you hear it in the menu. And then when you finally get to Ilos, I think it's in Ilos that you find the. Uh, it the, is in Ilos, yeah. Yeah, Ilos. yeah, and you know you hear it then, and you meet you meet Vigil, and you're like, ah, oh, like the the you know the shivers you get when I when I when I play it anyway for the first time. I was like, oh wow, yeah. this this makes sense, you know. Yeah, yeah, it's really cool, really cool idea. Yeah, it's amazing, and and of course, like I don't know whether the, if if it was um, in your mind to use the the Mixolydian mode, um, you know this kind of ancient. Greek mode that was used back, you know, thousands of years ago. Um, was that was that in your mind to do that, or was it literally just I'm just gonna put something down, you know? Oh, I doubt seriously. I was thinking, oh, I'm gonna write something in Mixolydian mode. I think I think I just heard heard the tune and just wrote it out, you know. Right. Uh, I just heard my, you know, it, that that mode is very kind of um, quite a bit for um, any time like. Uh, Terry congratulatory kind of thing you know it's mm -hmm. it's very it's very um celtic it's very uh right. you Ancient. know it just had that that sort of um militaristic but almost like uh when um dealing between people who respect one another that kind of thing and, and it's just a it just has a reverence to it but mm -hmm. for me it was it was just like a, like a little ditty that it was almost like this Celtic Danny boy kind of thing, you know? Right, um, yeah, yeah. Idea. I think that's what I was going for. Yeah, that's cool. I'm like, you know, because I'm Irish, so, you know, you hear, the, you hear these modes and you're like, they're all in Irish music, you know? I'm, I, I have Irish blood and, and I've always uh, somehow made it by, by Ireland. I, I actually oh, went wow. there... I went there for vacation. I spent some time in the western part of Ireland, and I just, you know, for me, it's like feels like home. 
you know. Oh, well, even no though, way. Even though, it, yeah, even though like I'm not, you know, I wasn't born Irish. It kind of feels like this ancient, like I go there and I feel like I'm home. Right, that's cool. Yeah, yeah it's um. I mean, it's not just because of the Guinness. It, <laughs> although, <laughs> although it never hurts, you know. No, but, absolutely yeah, not. There, so <laughs> the, the music, you know, I was always a big fan of uh, James Horner, and he would use oh, these yeah. kind of notes all the time in his writing. And sure, yeah, Braveheart. Braveheart, of course, yeah, yeah. it's amazing, yeah. But even like Titanic, you know, all that mm. stuff that he wrote, right? All that stuff, was fantastic. Yeah, he, I, he was the master at that. Really, really was. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Cool. So we get going anyway, and um, yeah. So actually, I was practicing over the last two or three days just um because i haven't played the first mass effect in so long so <laughs> i'm excited to watch you play this yeah <laughs> yeah i think you know all those ar arpeggiated um bass sounds are just i i just anytime i hear them i mean i know they've, they've been used in the in music you know in the 80s and that but it's just mass effect every time i hear us uh, that kind of that kind of synth arpeggiated sound i, I immediately think yeah that's mass effect yeah well, it, you know, at the time, it was a really unique musical direction for a game. Like, no other games really were using this kind of thing. Right. Of course, when um, uh, you're gonna play, you're gonna play the Menshep, huh? Yeah, I think so. I, that's uh, yeah. I, I was gonna go to Femshep, but I think. <laughs> yeah. This is so deadpan, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> um. It's, um. Casey Hudson was Please like, uh, I want to do profile. something, you know, Confirm Tangerine Dream kind of, you know, 80s sci-fi, basically. Let's, let's do that. And right. definitely not the guy you would pick if identity you were trying to do that, confirmed. but um, mm -hmm. to uh, to audition, right? So I did some, some game and they liked it. So here we are. Yeah, because I, I I can hear if I, I don't know whether you, you were going for it that you know the um any Marconi that you know from the thing because I yeah. always hear that you know the octave thing at the start the boom 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 it always reminds me of uh, the the score from the thing. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, yeah. That was a, that was a Sam Hewlett joint. Um, I was having some issues coming up with the right theme, and and he came in and. It's like we sort of worked from off of that and kind of wrote it the Arcturus after Arcturus after he then so that was fun. Nice. Yeah. yeah. I always like collaborating. It's, you know. Yeah, and actually, because I, I wanted to ask you about the the collaboration thing. Um, you know, how, how do you guys keep you know keep the continuity with the music? Because every composer has a different way of writing music. You know. So did you have you know a set of guidelines, or or how did you do it? Well. For, for Mass Effect, the first one, like, we never, the only thing we really collaborated on was that main theme, and other other times, we would just write music on our own. Right. Themes, right? So, it's funny listening to these orchestra. like, Casey didn't want real orchestra, he wanted kind of synthy orchestra, so it all sounds a little cheesy to me. Oh, right now, really? But, yeah, a little bit. I mean, it's aged very well. Not like not just the game, but the music as well. Three, yeah, yeah, I appreciate two, that. It's just, it's just a funny one. thing. He didn't want to use real strings. He wanted to use kind of synthy strings, you know. <laughs> That's interesting. It changed in Mass Effect Two. We used more, check, more orchestral samples and things check, like that. But internal emissions right. Any orchestra online. is supposed to be synthy, Drift. you know. Right. Yeah. Fifteen hundred K. Do you remember what software and that you were using for You're the actual score things. itself? You mean like, um, I hate that guy. My digital audio workstation kind of thing. Or? Yeah, like your sample libraries and and um, because I I, I recognize the some of the sounds like Good. the um, I, just jumped us I don't know if you use the, the Spectre Sonics um, atmosphere because I recognize some of the yeah. sounds. Well, yeah. I, I was definitely like using that. Board. And then I was using a lot of the, the Moog modular, the Moog modular and the mini Moog and the CS80 and stuff like that, you know? Right. And yeah, you can hear the CS80. All and, right. And Sam, Sam and I would share patches 
and things, you know, like patches and tweak them and then share them. Cool. How we collaborated the most, I think. Otherwise, we would just write for different areas of the game, really. Together a bit on the main thing, but yeah. He kind of worked, like I I more produced that, like he wrote most of it, and then I came in and wrote some of it, and then kind of produced it, because... At the time, um, Sam was kind of a young composer. He hadn't written a lot of stuff and produced mm -hmm. a lot of stuff, so it was just a matter of kind of coming together to make it sound the way we wanted. And right. And uh, but he was he was great to work with. He was uh, he's a talented talented guy. Yeah. Well, he, he's both are. <laughs> yeah. But it's uh, yeah, because it, I mean, it, it's it's hard to mix you know the blend between the orchestral stuff and the and the synth stuff um, and to get it right and make it make it sound not cheesy you know what's the payload captain yeah yeah and i think uh, i'm just watching you play now and some of the things that were were like when it comes to writing music for video games like one of my biggest peeves especially you know was, this is 12 13 years ago now mm -hmm. but one of my biggest peeves was always the transitions in video games were terrible you know right. like you you would go from one piece of music it would just suddenly cut off and then another one would start or something you know it'd be terrible right. like that <laughs> and so uh it's nothing to do with the composer it's just how it's put into the game and we had our fair share of problems on mass effect um which when we went to Mass Effect 2, we corrected a lot of that. Like I, I actually implemented all the music in Mass Effect 2. So that was like the, the thing that we wanted to fix between one and two is that, you know, the transitions and how, right. how music would flow. It, it should, for me, it sh a video game should feel like a film, like a, you're mm -hmm. telling a story and the transitions should be almost written to picture kind of thing. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yeah much easier said than done you know but i'm, I'm watching you play the, the conversations and you know music under this let me turn it up so so we we um i'm just trying to remember how we did this but we, you know the, the music for different things and then we would split it out into different stems and we would use kind of looping stuff that was more or like for these conversations and it just made it more cinematic you know right mm -hmm. um, uh, the emotional content sort of or as you're having these conversations and i think that really really is part of what made the game like a, a, a you know it's very cinematic in a way yeah because you because you go through i mean like when you're playing the game, especially when there's battles, and you know when you're going through, it's not, it's so seamless. No, it doesn't. It's not like here's an here's a battle scene. Then we're back to the you know the the ambient stuff. It's um, yeah, it's very seamless, very well stitched together. Yeah, yeah. So we worked really hard on both games for that, um, especially on two. Uh, this one was, you know, early on um, involved in the. In how music went in, but uh, Bring it up on screen. some issues with it when I played it. Um, right. But um, if you didn't, that's cool. <laughs> no, I, I didn't. Didn't notice. I don't think. <laughs> okay. But um, it, I mean, the game it, it really holds up, you know, and um, and it's such a popular game, um, you know. It, and what makes it is, for me anyway, when I play it, I mean, I'm, I'm a music composer, but the, the music uh, really sets the game and the tone, and yeah, and like, you know, it's just, it's like, this game, I mean, this and Knights of the Republic are, like, two of my kind of top games, um, Yeah, mm -hmm. it's just so cool being able to choose your own, you know, your own story, your own choices, and um, yeah, that's great. It's certainly a groundbreaking um, piece of video game, it's, it's like a really like i love working on games that are story driven like this you know right um lately i'm working a lot of call of duties and we try to do that but it's it's really hard because they're really shooters at heart you know this right. is more like we're telling a story and yeah yeah no i love that super 
well done and the writing is fantastic and right grab your gear and meet us in the cargo job with this game i thought it was just a really uh an amazing Kalilenko and jenkins to suit up yeah to, it's, to work it, on. it's a it's a piece of art really like i mean i i honestly think that you know it might sound silly but it's you know for me it's it's just it's just the top top of everything um story writing oh, I agree. music sound Absolutely. acting voice acting um, serious voice actors in it as well, you know. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I agree. It, it is a piece of art. It's yeah. um, it's, it should be respected. Um, Absolutely. The top game franchises and in, uh, in game history. It's it's just that good, you know. Yeah. Oh yeah. Totally agree. And every time you play it, it feels different, you know. Right. Just because of the, just the conversation wheel and how it, how it works in the game. It's just brilliant. Yeah, and the whole. It's actually, kind of, it's a, it has fun replay value. You go back and and you you almost try to break what you did before, like do <laughs> right. something, else. and you can, and and you can have a whole different experience. It's very, very cool. Yeah, it's um, you can play the bad guy or the good guy, you know. Yep. But, um, yeah, Renegade Paragon. I forgot about that. Yeah, so I, I don't know whether I'll I'll probably do maybe Paragon. <laughs> yeah. I always, I, that's where I always start, and then I just go back and try to play it as, as the evil guy. After that. <laughs> yeah, it's it's more fun though, isn't it? You know, <laughs> yeah, it always is. Yeah, more conflict, right? It's like, <laughs> yeah, I love these little bulbous guys. Yeah, they're cool, aren't they? So were you involved with the? You know, at the time were you playing this? You know, um, at, while writing the music, or were you kind of you know in the back just just doing the music on its own? Uh, yeah, the way that uh, we worked on this game, it was the first time, this is back in like, I think we were making it in like 2005, six. I mean, that's right. how far how we were working on it. Wow. Um, seven, but um, yeah, this is the first game I ever worked on. I worked on Jade Empire before, before this one with Flyware. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Like. That was a little earlier, two thousand four or five kind of mm -hmm. thing, where all I got was artwork. You know, it was, here's the story, and here's what the characters look like, and right. what do you think? You know, so, kind of like that. But this was the first game I worked on where I sort of developed the way that I work even to this day, which is take a level and do a video capture of the playthrough, and then we'll one spot where music is going to go and then I'll write to picture. Right. How I write this day. It's just, you know, capture of the other level and then I'll we'll transitions in the level. Like, we'll find out where those transitions are. Music is written for those transitions because that's... Right. Peeve in, in video games is when you, you don't have decent transitions. Right. And that, there's a nice one there. Yeah, exactly. And it's, it's, a, it's it, it was it was a challenge for the for the the uh, in the in the implementation side. Mm -hmm. It was a challenge for them to 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 sort of implement the way that I wanted it done. Um, this happens. It should fade out while another piece is playing over top as a in that section and then we go into a new section seamlessly and that kind of stuff it was it's easier said than done <laughs> right yeah i can imagine